Hello, everybody. How are you? Yeah. So you see, I can speak in English with, with a little South accent. Sorry about it. Um, I have a little quiz. If I say, Selamat pagi, Telimakasi, Sama Sama, which language is it? Malaysian, exactly, because, because Jessalyn is Malaysian, now she's live in Germany. She's from Google and uh, she's uh, working with dev tool, tooling, debugging, etc. So please give it for Jessalyn. Bonjour. This is the one of the two uh, fr French language that I know. So bonjour is one, another is merci. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So okay. So um, today I will talk about modern web debugging. So what I'm going to talk about is I will talk about generally about debugging and also Chrome DevTools. Anyone who does not use Chrome DevTools, okay. So good, good for you. So today you will learn a lot of new tips. For those who use, even better for you because you learn the new tips and you can use it. For those who doesn't use, maybe later you will consider using it if you are debugging your website or something. OK, so the very first tip on the screen, you see that I have my name and my job title uh, and, and what team I'm in. And below that, you, do you know that in console, that's the actual screenshot from the console. So you can write um, color code like this in the console. So what you need to do is that, is my clicker, mm, okay, the highlight doesn't work, never mind. So what you can do is that if you use the command like percent %c in your console.log messages, what you can do is you can pass some CSS style to style your message to look like exactly like this. Later on, I will share out my slide. So probably you cannot see it clearly now, but you can see it clearly later. Okay, so this is my handler. I'm Jack Fish. So because I like fish a lot, yeah. So you can see that. So I have been like 12 years in web development in general. Some of you might find my face similar, familiar. If you, if you sometimes when you use Chrome Dev Tools and there's this What's New tab pop up, and if you do not click close it immediately, you click on one of the link to learn like what are the new stuff. You might have seen my face, my video to talk about what are the new things in Chrome DevTools and share with you some DevTools tips. So next time, if it's come out, try not to just close it, click on it, then you'll get some new tips. <laughs> OK, so what am I going to talk about debugging modern web? So what do I mean by modern? OK, let's take a look at 15 years ago. This is how DevTools looked like 15 years ago. So I get it from an official blog post, so you can get that. So during that time, there's not much tab. You see that there's only like the elements panel, resources, source, and profile panel. So there's only like four or five panel. Can you guess how many panels Chrome DevTools have today? How many panels do we have? OK, who guess less than 10? Less than 20? Less than 30? Less than 40? OK, yeah, the answer is around 32. <coughs> so where, then you'll be, you'll be surprised, where, where are they? Maybe I only see like probably 10 of them, and all the others I do not use. OK, never mind, that's why I'm here today, to share with you some other tools that probably you can use, because there are a lot of developers building different stuff um, on the web, and the dev tools they need is very different from each other. OK, so yeah, OK. Yeah, so, so all, the, all the panels, if you want to see, is actually hidden in the three-dot menu. And then you click More Tools, and there's a list more tools there. Yeah, OK, however, after 15 years, like Chrome DevTools survived, the browser still mostly only understand HTML, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 
But the way you develop web application today or we develop web application today is so different from 15 years ago. Now we use different language. Who use TypeScript? Yeah, so we use TypeScript, SASS, SCSS, styles, component, a lot of them. And we use different frameworks. Someone might joke that every other month we have a new JavaScript frameworks, and you use different frameworks like Swell, Vue, uh, React. So you have .jx, x, .vue, and all the other files. And you also have some meta frameworks because framework is not enough. We need a meta frameworks. So we have framework like Next.js and Next.js. Anyone use meta frameworks? Yeah, a lot of us using that. Okay, so the way the, the things that you write doesn't doesn't it's not directly what the browsers understand. So there are some one, some things, some tools in between to make sure that to translate, to compile, to optimize your code into what the browsers can understand. Then only you can, we can surf the page. So build to like read, webpack, and roll up. So this, that, that are the three icons there. So what they are doing is that you use these tools behind the scene to help you to compile and to optimize the code from whatever language that you write, compile, compress, combine them into HTML, CSS, and JavaScript where the browsers can understand. So how about debugging? So for debugging, it's the other way around. So the browser needs to be able to convert to what you can understand to what you write and then to help you debug. So, and debugging is very important. This is us every day. We code for six minutes, and then we sit there, debug for six hours or longer. Sometimes it's just one little typo in the code, and then we are screwed for the, for the whole day. Yeah, so debugging is definitely important. So let's say you have this application which is a counter, is the plus and minus. And if you click on the plus button, there are some errors throw on the page. So this is the console. And in Chrome DevTools, what you can see is if you want to start debugging, first, you probably look at the error message on what is that. And then you probably might click on the link. Like in this case, this uh, error throws in the app.component on line 27, because it's show there, 27. And it can actually show you it's in the TypeScript file, it's the .ts file. And then when you click on that, you open um, the files in Chrome DevTools in the Sources tab, and you set a breakpoint. That's the breakpoint. And then you start debugging. You do the same action again and start debugging. We actually show you the TypeScript file, and then you can be able to debug the code that you write. But Am I lying? Because just now I say that Chrome DevTools doesn't understand TypeScript or any other language other than JavaScript. Am I lying? Because the code that we're debugging just now is TypeScript. So what happened behind the scene is that I did not lie. So if you look at this page, it tells you that in here. So it tells you that this file is generated uh, from a source map. So if you hover to that, you can see that it tells you that this file is source map from the other file. So, so then DevTools, there's a way. So what happened is that during the build tool, when they compile and optimize your code, what they will generate is that in, instead of just the JavaScript file, they will also generate something called a source map. So the source map file contains all the information that the browsers need to be able to convert your JavaScript back to the TypeScript and show it in DevTools, and then to help you with the debugging. So source map file is the magic that happened behind the scene. So this is an example of a source map file. So if you look at it, this file, so it's a JSON file, and then the first line is a file, the few. The few mentioned that this file name, um, this main.js.map file, is belongs to this main.js file. So this is the source map file for this file. And then this file, it's a combination of a lot of different source code. So for example, your TypeScript file and your library, your RxJS file, for example, all this file, the build tool will combine them, convert them into JavaScript, and minimize them, and produce the main.js file behind, uh, at, at the end file. So this sources file lists out all the actual file that you wrote. And then after that, your source code what they will do is that in this sources content, it will list out all the source content of your original file. So with this information, 
plus the mapping field. So in this way, Dev2 will read this file and take the mapping field to know that, oh, OK, so the mapping field, basically, you see that it's A, 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 B. You do not know what does that mean, right? So basically, it's like a it's like map. It's like longitude and latitude is actually connect. Say that, OK, so for line number one and column number six in this file, is connect to um, the, for example, the uh, TypeScript file, line number two, column number six. So it's doing this step-by-step -step mapping. So they have to pass this information, the mapping field, to be able to map that. So when you put a breakpoint, we know that, ah, OK, this is the fields that you actually want to debug. So that's how they have to understand where, to put the break, where you put the breakpoint and help you with the debugging. That's how, at the end, we show that it's TypeScript. It's, we doesn't show it's JavaScript. OK, so if you want to learn more about source map, you can go to my video. I have a video, what are source map, to actually explain that in details. And I have a blog post as well. The link is on the screen. And there's a joke in this page, if you did not realize. So there's a tomato sauce. And there's a map that I'm holding. So there's source map. OK, yeah, not, not very funny, OK? But see some laugh, OK. <laughs> OK. So um, with source map, we are also able to help you to pinpoint your issues quicker. So for example, before that, in your console, so let's say this is, this is an Angular application. So what you want to, from this tech trace, right, when you see your console, this error, right, sometimes you might be wondering, oh, this is not my code. My code is app.component.ts. And all this zone.js, all this instrument.js, all the other line are the framework's code. It's not the code that you write for. If you are using React, then that's probably is the React library code. That's not your actual code. In most of the time, probably you don't care about the framework's code and the library code. What you want is that, can you just show me what am I doing wrong on my code instead of showing me all the others irrelevant uh, stack trace? The good news is, um, there are some improvements that we did that we are able to help you to hide the irrelevant stack trace. And we also hide the irrelevant core stack, allow you to view your, the code that you write first and hide irrelevant files. With this, I want to do a demo. OK. Is, is this big enough? Yes? OK. So this is the application. This is in my local host. Let me just zoom in this slightly more. So, let me clear this. So if I click on this button, so the, one of the improvements that we did is that you see now, compared to the file that I show you just now, compared to the, okay, compared to the good that I show you just now, here I straight away show you your code. So I tell you that, oh, this error happens in f.component.ts. It's your own component file. And it is also caused potentially because it's also caused by button.component.ts file and the HTML file. And the last one is main.ts. So for whatever file that is irrelevant, like the frameworks file just now, the line is all gone. And DevTools now hide it under this show 236 more frames. So if I expand that, this is what you see previously. You see all the other zone.js, all the other frameworks code, which you might not be interested about. So with the latest improvement, Oh, it's a very long list. OK, so I click Show Less. Then now, if you are debugging your code, you are able to see uh, better exactly what is your code. We do the same as well if you click on the page and you, um, and you set a breakpoint. We also do that in the, um, in the core stack. So when you set a breakpoint, right, in your code, this is your core stack. OK, now it's too big. I cannot see it clearly. OK, let's do on the side. Here. So now in the core stack, we also show you directly your code, like the, the, the code in your app.component, like this might be the error, the stack trace that causes it. And what you can do is we, we show you this checkbox where you can tick and see all the other frameworks code if you still want to see that. But if you don't, you just hide it and then you don't see them anymore. OK. And another more improvement is that in the page tree, this side, 
so what you see here is what the, the, the final code, the JavaScript code. But these are the code that is final, finally get compiled to. What you might be interested is the file under the webpack, and this is your actual source file, your TypeScript file, all under this area. So if you want to invert that to see what your code first, so that you can easily search for that, you can click on this three dot button, go to group by author and deploy. Click on here, then you can, you can see that your code or the TypeScript file will be shown first, and then you can go to this file slightly easier. And not only that, what you can see here is that we gray out the file that we think is not, is not that you're interested. We gray out the node, dot, node underscore module file. You see that? And we also gray out the webpack file. So if you don't want to see this because this is not relevant, you can also click on the three dot, say hide, ignore, disturb sources. If you click on that, we will hide that. You just only see whatever file that you care about. So that is slightly easier for you to do the debugging. OK, then now the question is, how DevTools know what's to hide? Just now, we, we say, I mentioned that there is a source map file. That's why source DevTools know what to show. But how do we know what's to hide? The information is in the source map as well. So for example, RSJS is a third-party library that you might not want to debug the code. So in this case, the frameworks, when they generate this file, they need to, they need to populate this field called x underscore google underscore ignore list. And they say that, OK, so these are the files that is not important to the users because it's from the library. So once we have this information, that's why we use that information to gray out all the folder and all the files that we know that you might not be interested in. OK, and the good news is, if you are using Angular, Nux, and Bit, this setting is work out of the box. So the node module file, by default, is ignored. OK, you don't need to do anything. It will be grayed out, and your debugging just work. And um, also, if you are using, um, the, you, if you want to configure slightly further, if you are using read, roll up, or webpack, you can also uh, have a way to configure that um, to, to pass into the config file and, and configure that. Let me show you an example of a roll up config file. So in the config file, there is a field called source map ignore list. So what here is that you tell the source map file what should we ignore. So for example, if you have a third party asset folder, and the whole folder is like third party asset, you can do this. You say that this, if any path include this path, just ignore it. Just tell, add that line in the source map to say that uh, ignore it. So DevTools can understand that, oh, OK, so we, during the debugging, we will by default hide the stack. So that's much easier for you. OK, and not just, um, not just Chrome, Firefox support it as well. It's a bit weird. You say the X underscore Google ignore this, right? So we started this. Um, so then Firefox later think that this is valuable. And you can configure that in Firefox as well. If you use Firefox, you can click like um, in, the, in the setting. You can click on ignore known third party script. It will work as well. So it will skip all the stack that you do not care about. OK, so after I mentioned Angular, Nux, anyone use React? Yeah, a lot of you, right? So what about us? So your talk is not relevant to us. So what if your tool chain doesn't support it yet? So what you can also do something. You can ignore the files or folder by yourself in DevTools, and they will be grayed out visually. So let me show you a view, uh, a view project. Or if you are doing CMS like, like uh, WordPress and others, if you have files, you can configure that manually. So let's say this is my, um, this is an application built by Vue. So I'm using Vue.js to do that. So if I start debugging, let's say I want to debug, debug the click. So I do not know where to start. So what I can do is I can set a DOM, I can set a event listener breakpoint. Let's say I set a mouse click. If I click on it, so you see that because I haven't set anything yet, so you see that this go to the ESM bundler file, which is not what I want to debug. So let me just close that, and then it will just click on jumping to the file that I do not care about. OK, let me stop. OK. So what I can do now to improve the debugging experience is that in this node module, I can click on it, right click. I can say that I want to add this whole directory to acknowledge. So if I click on that, 
Now, if I debug again, it's jumped to your list.view file. It's no longer jumped to this ESM bundle and all the other files. It's straight away bring you to your list page.view file. And if I click um, continue, then it will jump to the header file. And it will jump to all the other files that's more relevant to you. Yeah. Yeah. So this one, this file is coming from. So if you know that, for example, if you have some, um, if you have some file that is coming from your uh, Google, uh, Google Analytics, you can also right-click on that folder and add that into the, the ignore list as well so that you can skip that as well. So that your whole debugging will ignore all this irrelevant file, jump straight to the file that is important to you. Okay, and you can see that after I ignore the file, Okay, let me um, unhide the. So after I ignore the file, the file will be gray out. The node dot underscore module now is gray out. And for any file, you can just ignore one file as well. So for all the file or anything that you ignore, it will be gray out. So visually, you know what have you done, what have you hide. And another thing is that who see this warning before? So the warning is like Dev2 failed to load source map. Could not, could not load content for something, something. Anyone see these errors before? Yeah, a lot of you. So you can, and then you do not know what to do because some of these errors, warnings, is coming from the extension. Okay, and the extension when they load, apparently they do not provide the source map. That's why, that's why Dev2 cannot load it. But you do not care about this error message, is it? So what Dev2 do is that now we hide that. You no longer see the source map warning in your console so that you have a cleaner console. And then, but if you, for those of you who really want to debug extensions or debug the source map, where you can find this error is that you can go to the, um, if you open the file, it will show you that the source map failed to load. Only when you go to the file, we tell you that, oh, the source map failed to load. Or you can go to the developer resources tab below, and then it will tell you that which are the file that is failed to load, if you, if you want to debug that. And for all, for all that, there's some challenging in fixing the debugging experience as well. So source map is not perfect. So let, let me give you an example. If you look at this, there's a greeting. So what this greeting do is that there's two variable. One is the number variable, one is the grid variable. And from here, we will display on the screen that combine this grid and the number variable and show it up. So this is what you write. And then when your build tool compiles it, it becomes, everything becomes one line. So, and then you see that it shows hello and E. So the E, we know that is the, um, is the uh, number variable, but the hello is the grid variable, which your build tool is very smart. It's just understand that it's a static string, and then it's just embedded directly. And because of this, this smart, it saves you a lot of bytes um, in your final file. But for debugging, it is not so good. This, because DevTools did not, the, in your mapping file, DevTools definitely lost the information. So for example, the number, because it still have the variable, DevTools is able to map it. But for the grid variable, DevTools is not able to show you a preview, and it's not able to show you that variable in the, um, in the debugging, because that variable is totally gone, totally wiped out. So if you do not know, source map, although have been so many years, it is an unofficial standard that everyone uses. It's like a standard, but it's not official. It's not like HTML, there's a spec, there's standard that, uh, that everyone have to do. It's unofficial. And it's in V3 since 2011. 2011 until now is about 12 years. So the way that we develop web applications is like so different now. And the spec is also like so flexible that it did not detect a lot of things. So different frameworks or different build tools understand it differently. So they, they produce the source map slightly different. So source, uh, at dev tools or any tools that uh, receiving end, they do not know actually how to parse the file correctly. So currently there's an effort to standardize the source map so uh, we are working with the TC39, which is the ECMAScript, uh, the standard bodies, to actually standardize source maps so everyone understands 
have the same understanding of how source maps should work. And the process is to uh, evolve the source map to harden the spec to Im finally improve the debugging experience. And this cannot be just browsers doing it alone or build tool doing it alone. The logging tools like Sentry, if you are using Sentry and others, they need source map as well in order to show you the correct information. And also Transfora, like the whole ecosystem are working together to make sure that the debugging experience gets improved over time. Okay. So now go to the final part of my presentation. Usually, this part is the most excited one. And uh, usually, also after I share with you some of the tips, I get some claps. So let's see if I live up to the, to the expectation, to my expectation. OK, so the first one, um, so I'm going to share about some new uh, DevTools features that can help you to do debugging. So the first new features I want to talk about is to override the HTTP response header. So for example, let's go to this page. So if I go to this page, uh, OK, it's warming up. Not good. Refresh, refresh. OK. Anyone hit course error before, C-O-R-S, during your development? Yeah. OK. Almost all of us hit that errors before. OK. Oh, the is status pending. So there are some. OK, so here. So apparently, if I want to detect the core errors, I can go to here. And then it say that both of my, so I have two, I have two JSON files that I want to load. And here it says that there's no access control allow origin. So if you are front-end developers, usually if you are do, do not work on the API backend, what you do is that you report these issues to the backend engineers and they will work on it. Sometimes they also cannot figure out immediately what you want. And but you want to build your front end, you want to continue to work. So what you can do now is that in DevTools, you can override that in your browsers. So what you can do is that click on this um, one of the field. Field resource. Okay, wait. Let me just uncheck all this first. Click on one of the resource, and then if you go to the request, um, the 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 respond header here, you see that there's this button edit. So you can click on the edit button. From here, you can add a new header. So I will paste in the access control allow origin, and I send it to all. <laughs> because why not? Just for my debugging, right? So now. Good thing is, you can see that you don't need to wait for the back end to fix. You still need to tell them to fix, but now you can continue your work without waiting just for that. So this is good. OK, so how about the other one, the dummy.json file? Of course, you can do the same, right? You just go and set it to all. But I have an even better one, is that you, if you go to the todo.json, you click on the .headers file. What your edit behind the scene, right? What we do just now is that we create something called a dot .headers file. So we say that this rule applies to this file only. So what I will do is I will apply to everything. <laughs> All dot JSON. And then if I refresh the page, I will expect that my dummy dot JSON result now load as well. So let me refresh. Okay, now it loads as well. So this is a good thing. So you no longer need to wait for the cause errors. Any claps? OK. OK. So this is, one of the, this is one of the features, but it's not just useful for the cause error. So for example, there are some security header that you want to debug, right? This is very useful. You just configure your different security headers to see how they behave. Um, so it's very helpful for that. OK, the next tips is you can mock APIs and file contents with DevTools. So this one is that anyone use Postman and or similar tools? OK, good. A lot of you use, right? Because sometimes backend haven't finished develop the API, but you already know the shape of your response, and you just want to mock the, the response and start working on it. So the good news is you can do that with Chrome DevTools now. You need to update your browsers to the latest version. OK, so let's say just now here, the course, the first one to do list is to watch a classic movie. OK, that's boring. I don't want to watch the classic movie. So what I can do is I can right click on the to do list um, JSON. And I, from here, I can say that I want to overwrite the headers or I want to overwrite the content. I just go to the overwrite content. 
I want to watch back to the future. And then uh, probably my user ID is wrong. I change it to five. Okay, I just save it. So once I save it, and I, okay, let me add one more line as well. Okay, so if I want to add one more task, uh, what else do I want to do? I want to uh, book a diving holiday. Yeah, okay, why not? Okay, so if I refresh that, see, now you get a different request now. So if the, the response is like totally empty, you can also just mock that. It's that easy. So previously, so to be honest, these overriding features have been there for quite some time. But how, who, 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 who of you know about it? Do not know because there's no shortcut for do that. Previously, if you want to do that, you need to go to the sources panel, open it, uh, go to the, click on this, go to the overrides tab. You need to enable this one and then start from there to do the overriding. But now we make it slightly easier. We support all the API and all the fetch requests and SHR requests. And then we also add a easier way for you to override from here. So that's easier for you to, to mark your API. So let's say you don't have Postman in your, in your file. Never mind, you can use DevTools to do that. Okay. The next one is an experiment to have a cleaner UI in DevTools in the network panel. So previously, this is what you see. Okay, let me just disable the, okay, never mind. Okay, let me just disable the uh, experiment for the bit to show you what you see previously. So previously in the network panel, you have this long list of request type. And then you have a lot of checkbox here. Okay, now, now I have a question. Whoever answered it correctly, I give you a few stickers. Okay, not very exciting, but just to test your knowledge. So let's say now, you know that if you uh, want to filter like JavaScript or CSS requests, you can just click and then it will filter it accordingly. But let's say you want to filter JavaScript and CSS requests, you want to see both CSS and JavaScript requests, how do you do that in here? How do you select both? Anyone? Yes. Press control. Um, okay, so I press control. No. Uh, so I'm using Mac, so I use command. Okay. Yes. If you are using Mac, you press command, you can select multiple of it. So you can see that. So, but one person know, and probably like just now a few, a few of you raise out the hand, you know, but a lot of people doesn't know. And this UI here, it's quite a bit of clutter. So we are thinking that we want to redesign that. So if you are using the uh, latest version, what you can do is you can go to this uh, experimental tab and then you enable the uh, redesign of the filter bar in the network panel. You reload it. And then now we clear that. So now what you see is that's a slightly cleaner one so, in the, so we hide everything under the request type. It become a drop down, document, script, and everything. So you can select it from here. And we'll show you like how many requests you select and, and this. And for all the other filters, we place it under here. So if you want to hide the extension URL, hide data URL, you can just select and you show it up here. How many of you think you like the new one more better than the old one or it doesn't matter to you? Who likes it more now? Cleaner? Okay, so for those of you who think that this is better, so we have a few questions um, uh, to, uh, to ask you about the UX. So later on, I will share you a link. It's just three questions. So you sort of answer that and let me know if this is, you feel like better and this behavior is okay. Then we'll implement that. We will turn the experiment on because there are a few unanswered questions that we are not sure yet. Yeah. Okay, so the next tip, it's about emulate a focus page. So this is a very interesting issues. Okay, so let's say you go to the YouTube. This is the, um, the YouTube page. Okay, so let's say now, I, there's a search box here. I type DevTools, I do a search. Let's say now in this search dropdown, there are some errors happen and you want to debug that. 
how would you start debugging that? Maybe you want to change the style slightly. How would you start? So usually, probably, you will start by using the inspect and go to inspect. But wherever you inspect, it is gone. Anyone hit this issue before? Anyone of you know how to work around with it in DevTools? Hmm, OK, good. Ah, so this is a tip for you. OK, so from here, so the reason why is so, so another thing that I probably will try is that I will go to this Hover icon. I will go to this, um, I mean, like just what I would try if I do not know how to solve it. Probably I would select this input box. And then what I would do is I would select focus and select hover to see if something happened to show the pop up. And if it doesn't show, then I will just click everything. <laughs> OK. And no luck, nothing show as well. So the reason why it doesn't show the, the, the thing and this drop down work is that it depends on the document.focus. It's not just on the hour, but it's on the document focus. So wherever your mouse move the focus away from the page, the focus on the page, the document of focus is gone. That's why you cannot, you cannot debug the disappearing element like this. So what you need to do is that you need to emulate, you need to put back the page focus to the page. So there's a hidden feature where you need to click Escape button and click on the three dot. Click on the rendering. Ah, this is the hidden panel. And then there is this field, scroll down all the way, there's this emulate a focus page. That's mean to emulate the focus back to your page. So when you click that, ah, that's it. It's there. So you can start debugging now. OK. 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 Thank you. But. That's also this. That's also this thing. Now, now you might, now you might, might be angry with Chrome DevTools. Why do you hide it in somewhere that I do not know where? How do I imagine that? How do I know it is there? So can you put that to somewhere that is closest to probably where you debug? So later on in the survey, that I'm going to send you a few questions. It is including. So we currently we are thinking to just surface it in the uh, styles pane that I opened just now. So it's either the design number one, design number two, and design number three. So later, you in the survey form, you just select which one looks better for you, or you have a better way for us to su su surface that, to put that in, to help you better with debugging. So just let us know later. OK, the last tips that I'm going to share today, I, I mean, I have 10 minutes, I can share a few more. So but this one, the recorder tab. So if you want to, if you have some step that you want to run repeatedly, like for example, if you want to test your page, um, the whole flow, what you can do is, in the three dot here, more tools, you can pull out the, um, the experimental recorder tab. So from here, what you can do is you can record the step. You create a new recording, uh, order coffee. I'll just call it a name, order coffee, and I start record. So what I do is I click on Espresso. Oh, oh no. Do I, um, OK. Oh, because I set to debug just now. OK, let me just disable the debugging first. OK, OK, OK. OK, I do not want to debug anymore. OK, continue. OK, let's start again. Sorry. We will work as well, the debugging, but let's start again. Order coffee. Start, I click on the espresso, and then I click, if the espresso is expensive, obviously, and you <laughs> click on that, fill in the name, the email, checkbox. You see that it detects every step, and you click Submit, and then you click Stop. And then what you can do is that you can replay it. So if you replay it, it will replay exactly what the step that you see. But you know, just now replay is very fast. If you want to change the speed, you can change it to slow, very slow, or extremely slow. So depends on if you want to see whatever happened on your page, you can do this. Or what you can do is you can do a breakpoint as well. So you might want to see step by step. So I would just put a breakpoint um, maybe somewhere here before you click. So I click replay. What it will do is it will click on, um, it will stop here before executing the, the click step. And then I hover to it, you see that it's clicked now. 
and then now you click to proceed to check out so you can debug it step by step in order to view your step. And the good thing is, probably you want to export, probably you have a bug report. You can use this to record your bug and then export it as a JSON file or a puppeteer script, send to your colleague, and then they can. So let's, let me just download the JSON file. OK, order coffee JSON file, save it, and then I just delete it because I can import it later. I can import back the desktop or the coffee file, import it, and then I replayed it. So you can do that, attach in your bug report, or just you have just a few user flow that you want to automate, you can start with this. And not just this, so for those of you who want to learn how to use Puppeteer or any test automation framework, you can also click show code to view the code. So here, if you install the uh, Cypress extension, it will help you to convert all these steps into Cypress. So when you hover to this step, it will show you that these are the steps and what are the steps that is typed. So you export and run it with Cypress, you can do so. There are also others extension like web page test and all the others. You can, um, so if you click on here, there's a get extension here. You can see what are the extension that's available and download it and, and, and use it. So this helps you to save a few clicks every time when you debug your applications. All right, one last thing. This one I hear a lot. A lot of you say I never report any bug. But DevTools, every time when I curse about the bug, DevTools, the next version, DevTools fix it automatically. So the truth is we are not AI. So we read every bug reports that you file in order to understand what are the issues. So if you have any issues, please report it. Use in the Chrome DevTools, you can click on the three dot, help, and report the DevTools issues. So when you report, report nicely, don't curse us. Don't, don't say, I hate you. You make my life hard. So sometimes we receive bug report like this. Please report it properly. Then we will look at it and fix it. So just, just don't take the bug yourself and, okay, don't use this dev tools anymore. I use the other one. You can help to improve, help you and help others as well, and we will fix it. Okay, so uh, that's all for today. So this is me under the water because I like fish a lot. So if you want to know what are the best places to go diving or if you want to learn more about Chrome DevTools, later you can go to the, um, the Google booth. I will be there. You can come and ask any questions or send me any bug, tell me any frustration you have with DevTools, and I will be there. Uh, so if you want to get the slide and fill in the survey, so you can click here. So there's a slide link within this, and then you can fill the form. So that's all. Thank you. Merci.